I'm Ryan, this is 52 SC Friday, week 11. This time it's a nano tank. Sometimes it's the small things in life that really matter. The animals who get lost in a larger tank, but can be the star of the show in a nano. This style of tank can be the hardest tank you'll ever do or the easiest, that's up to you. What are the challenges of nano reef and how do we intend on solving them? All that is coming up. The first draw of a nano is anyone can do it in almost any room on any reasonable budget. A way to add life to your workspace, living space, like kitchens and living rooms, but even a nightstand or a way to share the hobby with our children, basically anywhere. They can be the easiest tank that anyone will ever do and one of the most powerful. I say powerful because it causes you to take a closer look at the animals that often go unnoticed. Up close, with just inches between you and the animals, something as simple as a cleaner shrimp is experienced totally differently. Polyps take on an entirely different life. Even a single polyp can be impressive. Rather than waiting for years for small frags to grow out, the frags create a complete look day one. Even snails take on a whole new life in a nano where you're looking up close. Something as simple as an urchin can be the star of the show. Maybe the most common, the clownfish and its anemones share in your desk. A dartfish can take on a whole new beauty. What can be a problem in some tanks becomes the focus of the display. Small predators that are not the best fit for many larger tanks, but perfect for a nano. Even something as stunning as a dwarf lionfish, up close there's a nuance to its beauty. Even fanworms become the focal points of a tank. There are a number of things that go into a nano, so let's get to it. We didn't include a nano tank in 52SE because it's a revolutionary style of tank. We did it because nanos and all-in-ones that are just over that size are the most popular tanks out there, and this is an educational series, so we can't leave them out. That's particularly true because nanos are easier and fit almost anywhere, but also because they're a fraction of the cost. The tank is cheaper, there's no room for fancy equipment or sumps, and they look full with a fraction of the coral and fish as well. The reason I included tank budget in a nano is because many will want to do this cheaper, and there are ways to do that while respecting the animal's success and our own, but not doing it cheaply, which doesn't. Most people should expect this to cost about two to four times what a similarly sized freshwater tank would cost, depending on how you want it to look and your approach to longevity. A nano just means a smaller tank that features smaller animals, commonly in that five to 20 gallon range, more or less a question of what fits in your space. That said, almost all the lessons you'll hear today also apply to up to 40 gallons, like a 40 breeder or E170. The right tank size and shape is what fits in your space, but right behind that is the most fundamental lesson, dilution. What can go bad in 90 days in a 100 gallon tank will go bad in just 18 days in a 20 gallon, which is 80% less water to dilute mistakes. Or nine days in a 10 gallon, or just four and a half days in a five gallon. That also applies to challenges like a hot room. A five gallon can overheat in an hour where 100 gallons might take an entire day. This is the fundamental reason why most experienced reefers will say nanos are some of the hardest tanks out there, not to set up, but to be successful with long term. That said, hard is not an act of physical labor. It's just being aware of the challenges and accounting for them. For 52SE, we're using the max spec 12 gallon dice, which is right in the middle of that five to 20 gallon range. One of the lessons that come from running a successful nano is all of the expensive filters and reefing really only serve one primary purpose, reduce the need to do water changes, which are pain. The skimmer, felt, fuge, scrubber, roller, and all the rest of it is just designed to reduce the need to remove dirty water and replace it with new clean water. However, in a nano like our 12 gallon dice, a water change takes 60 seconds. Scoop out a gallon of water from the tank and dump a gallon of fresh salt water in once a week and you're done. Once rock and sand is accounted for, a gallon in a 12 gallon tank like this one is around 10% once a week. Pollution and nutrients shouldn't be a problem. If it is, switch to a gallon and a half. Keep a bucket of salt water near your tank or the sink, and this is why nanos can be one of the simplest, cheapest, and easiest tanks out there. However, this is where that first lesson in nano reefing comes in. Someone might say if you can't scoop a gallon of water out of the tank once a week, then reefing probably isn't for you. But that also assumes that you're not human with human needs. Most reefers are diligent about every week, but a job change, a new addition to the family, seasonal work on your home, or a particularly fun summer, and other distractions are real, some legitimately more important than your aquarium. Once a week slips to every other week, everything seems okay, so it slips to once a month, and then the tank is gone by the end of the summer. This is a pretty common path, but totally avoidable. 
In fact, this is the number one reason why 90% of reefers are failing in the first year. They start with a small tank and no one prepared them for the very high probability, almost predictable results of what happens when you stop the water changes on a small tank like this one. So what are the solutions? If you miss the 60 second scoop water changes one week, do two the next week or heat the water and do a larger one. Measure nitrate and phosphate once a month for water quality. These pollutives are the result of food input and basically tied together, so testing both may ultimately be unnecessary. If you prefer using test kits, the NIOS nitrate is easier to read than any phosphate kit. Or if you like, use the HANA checker, which has a digital readout for nitrate and phosphate. The primary goal is just not perpetually rising every single month after testing. If it does start rising, scoop out a little bit more water every month. It's just that easy. This all does relate to sizing the tank as well, because if you know that you have a busy life where even a weekly 60 second scoop water change is likely to get missed then the larger 20 gallon range of nanos is better for you really busy life 20 to 40 gallons won't be a nano but it'll absorb many more of the mistakes and probably a better fit for 52 SC we run lines for auto water changes using the Neptune dose to all the tanks here so we'll be doing one and a half percent today which almost completely removes the work I'm 100% aware of my available time so if I was doing this at home I'd put a couple of containers underneath the tank in the sand for fresh water and old water to perform auto water changes with a dose inside the tank stand. Turning 52 weekly scoop water changes to just 12 monthly five gallon container changes, a better fit for me and because of that, better for the animals in the tank as well. Element uptake and testing demands in a nano can be minimal with corals like mushrooms, zoanthids, xenia, which uptake very few elements and just much less of a concern. There will be some dosing and testing with an LPS tank and a lot with a nano SPS tank, which I'd only suggest for pros. Because there's often a high coral to water density and coralline coverage in established nano tanks, consistency matters with a nano more than most tanks. Missing a day or a few days of dosing, consistently falling and rising levels can be stressful on the animals. Easiest solution is select corals that limit this. However, there's a contrast to that. Corals like green star polyps, xenia, zoanthids, mushrooms, and nephthia are great additions day one, but they grow fast and can rapidly take over the tank and encroach on each other. A nano is often best with slower growing corals like blastos, recordia yuma, or small brains or micros, or even scolies. Regardless of that, most tanks will have some uptake. I suggest Tropic Marin's one part all for reef, which is the easiest solution that doesn't immediately spike alkalinity or pH with manual dosing. The smallest container has its own measurement tool. If you have space, any popular doser will provide the stability that nanos thrive on. For 52 SE, we're using a Versa and a space saving jug in the cabinet. The easy story builds, aquascape in a nano should be easy, often just a single piece of interesting rock placed in the center or a couple pieces of Marco broken up and reassembled. For 52SE, we use Real Reef's mini reef box, super glue accelerator for basic design and D&D purple epoxy for securing it. D&D purple epoxy is the perfect color match to Real Reef, just make sure to push a piece of rubble into it for texture to create a visually seamless stable scape. Lighting should be simple on nanos. They're just small areas to light, shading less of an issue, and the small glass box reflects a lot of light around the tank. Many of them come with lights, which are adequate for most uses. For 52SE and the dice, we're using the Kessel A80 turned to its highest intensity. The main reason is it's easy, not overpowered to the application, spectrum's easy, and on a nano like this, we look close. The LED artifacts like disco, static, and color hotspots are more obvious. The a 80 single lens solves all of those issues. For water flow, many will rely on the return pumps that come on these all-in-one style tanks. For 52SC, on the Dice tank, we're going to use the Innovative Marine Aqua Gadget Desktop Wavelink DC pump. It's the smallest pump we have here. Flow is one of those things you'll never know if you got right until the corals are in there. So more on that with our first update. Historically, putting a monitor on a tank like a 12-gallon would have been considered ridiculous. However, historically, 90% of these tanks would also failed in a year as well. Part of that is because when things go bad on a tank like this, they go bad fast. For 52SE, we're using the Apex Junior, which will tell us when the heater fails on or off, a when, not if problem for every reefer. The Fusion Heartbeat will tell us about power outages. The pH probe will indicate many of the chemistry or dosing problems. Water level sensor that it needs to be topped off with fresh water, or in our case, that the Tunes Oscillator's reservoir is empty. A leak sensor and Fusion provides convenient place for testing results, maintenance, notes, and tasks. 
This is unnecessary for most reefers, but because on this tank we're not here on weekends or holidays or nights, which is about 80% of the time, we plugged in an EB832, which allows us to remotely turn things on and off like a heater, or set it up to do that automatically in the event of a heater failure. Also unnecessary but cool and completes the look of our installation, we installed an adaptive reef interface board, which gives easy access to Neptune Fusion and a switch box for feed modes, maintenance modes, push button water changes, after hour lights, and instead of plugging in and unplugging all of the plugs, we can turn everything on or off in the tank with the flip of a switch. That's the mission with the nano tank, the unique environmental challenges and how we intend to handle them next week. Time to meet the 360. It's your reef tank. Do what you want. BRTV subscribers get to see it all in the full 52SE playlist right here.